In the previous part, we saw that we could calculate the gradients for each individual weight in the neural network. In this section, we are going to see how to actually use these gradients now to calculate the changes that we want to make for each of these weights. We're going to first look at how we do this for back propagation. In the next part, we'll see how to do this for resilient propagation, which is a much more effective and complex technique than back propagation. Let's begin by looking at the weight update formula that we have for back propagation. Back propagation specifies that the delta weight for the weight T is equal to negative epsilon, which is your learning rate. We'll get into that in a second times the partial derivative of E with respect to the weight at T, which is the weight we're trying to update. This fraction it looks like a fraction. It's actually a derivative. That's just the gradient. That's what we calculated last time. Plus alpha. Alpha is the momentum. That's another important technique that we see in back propagation times the delta weight of t minus 1. So the previous change from the previous iteration. So this equation here is basically back propagation. Now we're going to see how we apply this to the gradients. First, let's write down our two parameters that we have here. We have epsilon, which is your learning rate, and you have alpha, which is the momentum. These two are parameters that you need to pick when you feed them into the neural network. You need to pick these training parameters, and what you pick for those is going to be very important to the success of the training of your neural network. Typical values for these for the exclusive OR might be something like 0.7 for the learning rate and 0.3 for the momentum. Those are not necessarily the only values. If you find that your neural network is not converging, you're going to need to very quickly drop this learning rate to something much smaller. It can become a very, very small fractional value very quickly if your neural network is simply not learning, if the error rate is not falling or it's simply fluctuating around. We'll see another training algorithm in a later part called resilient propagation. And one of the main advantages of resilient propagation over back propagation is that you don't have to come up with these values. You just send it off and it trains the neural network much more effectively than back propagation. However, back propagation is very simple and it is a good introduction into neural network training. The learning rate specifies how quickly the weights are going to be updated. The quicker you update the weights, the quicker the neural network will converge and that's good, but if you try to teach the neural network too fast, it's not going to converge. The weights are going to become will begin to oscillate wildly. You're not going to your error, your global error that we saw to calculate earlier is simply going to go up and down and you'll get nowhere. When that happens, you need to back off on the learning rate. Momentum is to escape something called a local minima. Let's take a quick look at what a local minima is. That is a very important concept for neural networks. When we learned about gradients, we saw that we could calculate the gradient of the error with respect to a weight. And this value will go up and down and do all sorts of things. <laughs> 
This is your error as you change the weights. You start out at, with backpropagation, you start out at one particular point. Maybe the random weight happened right about here. And we adjust the random weight, maybe the gradient at this point would be something like that. So that would tend to indicate, and backpropagation will follow, basically follows the gradient, you would start to adjust the weight and eventually you would settle on this spot right here as being the ideal weight. Unfortunately, that's a local minimum. There is also a local minimum here, and then there's the global one here. That's where you'd really like to get to, but you failed to get there because you got stuck. There's no real effective way to prevent that from happening with backpropagation. However, the momentum gives an additional force from the previous weight adjustment, which will cause the adjustments to keep going sort of in the same direction. And this can sometimes force your way out of a local minimum. It doesn't always work, but it can be effective. For example, if you were moving down this direction and you found this, the momentum might keep you going in this direction long enough to power through that little hump that you saw there and work your way into the global minimum. The thing to keep in mind with training neural networks is that you're starting from random weights, and this is basically a search. It's as if you dropped a parachutist down somewhere on the planet Earth and you told them to find the lowest point on the planet Earth. They might drop down somewhere in the Rocky Mountains and begin searching around and find, an un find a nice valley, but they'll never get a chance to even explore the oceans because they saw the other cliffs of the mountains around this valley before they even got a chance to get outside of even North America. You have a tremendous amount of weights to search through for a neural network, so some other techniques attempt to do more of a global search, for example genetic algorithms, which throw all sorts of random weights at it and cause them to evolve into better and better neural networks. Backpropagation just drops you in at one point where you picked your random weights and searches around in that area. It's mostly a local search. That's why sometimes when you initialize a neural network to random values and train, it'll simply fail to converge. It landed in a really bad spot. If you reinitialize the neural network to random weights again, it will it may well converge and produce a error that is acceptable to you because the random weights landed at a spot that was close enough to the global minimum that the neural network was able to be trained to an acceptable error rate as backpropagation adjusted these weights. At this point in training, the position of input neuron, hidden neuron, wherever the weight lands really does not matter. We can simply think of the gradients and the weights as one long array. Say for example the neural network that we were just looking at. The gradients are simply going to be a list. You'll have gradient 0, gradient 1, gradient 2, gradient 3, dot, 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 all the way up to gradient 8. A neural network of the size that we were looking at in the previous part has 8 gradients. It also has 8 weights. You always have the same number of gradients and weights. And each of these gradients has an individual value. The first one, which we calculated at the very, very end of the last part, is 0. 0, 1, 6, 7. We could have then went on and calculated all the other gradients. The second one happens to be 0 0.033. And the other ones, we're not going to walk through this for every single gradient. It really doesn't matter. We also have weights that correspond to each of these gradients.
The first one happens to be happens to have a weight of negative 0 0.227. If you looked at the chart that we had in the previous part, you would see that weight. The second weight happens to be 0 0.5817. Those are the actual weights to the neural network. We're going to adjust these. So now let's use this formula that we developed up here and get an actual, use actual value. So the change in weight we're calculating for gradient zero is going to be, is going to equal Let me actually remove this negative that we had up here. It's simply the learning rate times that. We already applied that negative to these gradients. That's actually two different ways that are sometimes used to calculate the gradients. That negative needs to get applied at some point, but it was already applied to the gradient like you would have seen in the previous one. So this equation here is simply the learning rate times the, the gradient t plus the alpha times the previous weight adjustment. So let's write this out. We are going to write this out as the learning rate, which is 0 0.7 times the gradient, which is 0 0.0167. Plus the alpha, which is 0 0.3, times the previous weight adjustment, which is 0 for this first iteration. So this is going to drop out. That is our change in weight. So the change in weight is now going to be equal to 0.1167 This value will simply be added to our weight here, which will produce a new weight value. And we need to save this weight value that we had here, this 0 0.1169, because it is going to be used to be multiplied against the momentum when we calculate the next iteration. Another important point to look at, too, from the previous part is this gradient. We, here we simply had the gradient 0 0.167 from the, the first element of the training set for the exclusive OR. Here we were doing something called online training. We were basically adjusting the weight for every single training element. Online training is really not the most effective way to do this. What you usually want to do is sum the gradients. So you would calculate on the exclusive OR, there's four other training set elements. You would take those other four training set elements for the other values. So for ex exclusive OR, you have 0 and 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 1, each of these is going to produce a gradient for online training you just process these one by one by one by one and you update the weights of the neural network as you do this for batch training you sum these and this gives you some gradient total that you then use to adjust the neural net the weights of the neural network using the exact same equation just like we did here. So batch training like we have here is much more effective and is the training algorithm that is usually used. This is back propagation. It tends to converge relatively slowly in the next part, we're going to take a look at resilient propagation, which does not require these training parameters and converges much more quickly.